Thomas and friends, making tracks to great destinations. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. The Great Discovery. Sodor Day was coming to the island of Sodor. Thomas and James were very excited. There would be picnics all over the island, and a magnificent brass band. And the biggest carnival Sodor had ever seen. All the engines were busy, and everyone was excited. Sodor Day was the island's grandest celebration. Thomas and James were racing to the wharf. To to Thomas, whistled James, and on they raced, faster than the wind. And more daring than darting arrows. Thomas and James steamed into the wharf. First, James was in front, then Thomas took the lead. The wharf was buzzing, barges chugged, cranes swun, and freight cars rattled and rolled. Thomas and James raced by. The little narrow gauge engines whistled and whizzed in surprise. At the speed and the steam of the big engines, the narrow gate controller was waiting. Thomas whooshed around the corner, pumping and huffing, just in front of James. To to Thomas, huh? <laughs> James's cheeks were as red as his paintwork. Mister Percival announced loudly. James smiled. He liked that job. Now he didn't mind about losing the race. Thomas was excited. Thomas wished with withered steam. He was disappointed. He wanted to work at the wharf, and Duncan was tricky. He liked to tease the big engines, especially Thomas. Added Mister Percival. Teased Thomas back. Duncan puffed crossly away. Later at the transfer yards, Thomas was waiting for Duncan. Duncan puffed in. Teased Thomas. This made Duncan cross. Thomas pumped his pistons. His trucks were now piled, and he was ready to leave. Then Duncan had a cheeky idea. Thomas wasn't sure. Puff Duncan, huff Thomas crossly. So the two engines steamed off. Thomas and Duncan chuffed up to the junction. Puff Duncan. Thomas's signal turned green. Thomas tooted. And he puffed on, but Duncan didn't know that the high bridge wasn't safe. It hadn't been used for a long time. Thomas chuffed slowly toward the bridge. The bridge looked very old, and it was very high, and the ravine was very deep. Thomas could hear rocks falling down into the ravine. He felt a little scared. He puffed bravely. Wheel, wheel turn by wheel turn, Thomas edged onto the bridge. He chuffed to himself. Thomas was now halfway across the bridge. 
sound of the falling rocks was louder and louder. The bridge started to shudder and shake. Thomas didn't like that at all, but he wanted to get to the other side. Then Thomas heard a mighty crack. Part of the bridge in front of him came away from the rocks, cried Thomas. He was very scared. Then Thomas started to reverse. He puffed slowly and carefully. Then there was another mighty crack. A large piece of the broken bridge fell down into the ravine below. With the biggest puff he had ever puffed, Thomas pushed backwards onto the hillside. He cried, just as the last part of the bridge roared and swung into the deep ravine. Thomas peered down to the broken bridge below. He gasped. Thomas puffed back to the junction. He saw there was another track. Whistled Thomas. And he rattled away down the steep track. The track was covered in thick branches and bushes. They scrunched and scratched as Thomas chuffed through them. He huffed, and he puffed on. Then Thomas gasped. He had arrived at a hidden town. It was very old, rusty, and overgrown. Thomas cried. There were lots of old buildings and a station covered in ivy. He tooted. Thomas was very excited. He wished. Thomas chuffed to a halt. He gasped. Thomas had never seen such an amazing sight. He cried. Thomas was very excited indeed. He tooted loudly. Thomas bumped and bashed his way along the old track. He had to spread the news. He whistled as loud as he could. He whistled, so he whistled again. Suddenly, a horn hooted. Thomas hooted. Madge was surprised to see Thomas. Thomas tooted excitedly. Exclaimed Madge. Madge found Mighty Mac at a crossing. She hooted loudly. Mighty Mac told Sir Handel, who told Scarloe, who told Reneus, who told Mr. Percival, <laughs> who told Harold, who immediately flew off to find Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt had been having tea when Harold arrived, shouted Harold. Sir Topham Hatt was very excited. He boomed. Soon Thomas and Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the hidden town. Thomas wished. Sir Topham Hatt beamed from ear to ear. Thomas gasped. He and the other engines have heard tales about Great Waterton. Sir Topham Hatt said, Puff Thomas, cheered Thomas, smiled Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas felt very proud. Thomas tooted. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. The other engines were really proud of Thomas. He boomed. Percy was puzzled. He wished quietly, groaned Gordon loudly. Sir Topham Hatt added, all the engines were pleased. Sir Topham Hatt gave each engine important jobs. They whistled and tooted in excitement. Sir Topham Hatt telephoned Miss Jenny. Said Miss Jenny, so Miss Jenny went to go and see Jack and his team.
Boom Jack excited thee. At the depot, Mr. Percival gathered his engines. He spoke loudly. The engines hooted and tooted happily. Mr. Percival cheered. Pack a tim of sheds. Sir Topham Hatt was talking to Thomas. Thomas was pleased. Sir Topham Hatt added. Puff Thomas proudly. Sir Topham Hatt added. Thomas didn't take any notice of this. He was too busy thinking about being in charge of all the work at Great Waterton. The next morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Brindam Docks to meet the new engine. Even Cranky was excited. Suddenly, there was a loud sound of pistons pumping from behind a cloud of steam. A new tank engine came slowly out. He was shinier and bigger and stronger than Thomas. Boom, Sir Topham Hatt, gasped Henry. Thomas didn't know that Stanley had arrived. He had been busy. He had already found a lot of hidden tracks. Thomas had puffed proudly along to his new engine shed. James huffed up. Thomas tooted grandly. James wasn't interested in Thomas's shed, snorted James. Thomas was surprised. Suddenly, his new shed didn't seem so important. The next day, Thomas had to pull heavy cars of stone to the docks. He stopped at the washdown. He saw a shiny new tank engine. He puffed to himself. <laughs> Stanley and Percy were playing and joking. Both engines had told the workmen to pour on more bubbles. Percy was giggling and Stanley was laughing even louder. Thomas felt left out. He tooted to his friend, but Percy was too busy having fun. He didn't notice Thomas. Thomas puffed on. He was upset. Later, Thomas stopped at the, at the junction. Gordon was waiting. Suddenly, with a wish and a whistle, Stanley wished along the line with Annie and Clarabelle. They were having a wonderful time. They clattered straight past Thomas, Gordon declared. Thomas watched Stanley disappear. He didn't think it was fun at all. That night, Thomas puffed into Tidmouth sheds. He was very tired. Tonight, he wanted to be with his friends. He gasped. Stanley was in his berth. Stanley blew a high sound from his whistle. Then Gordon blew a low sound. Then Emily trembled a sound no one had ever heard before. All the engines whooshed and whooshed with laughter, whistled Stanley. Hello, Thomas, chuckled the other engines. But Thomas wasn't chuckling. He didn't like Stanley doing his jobs or pulling his coaches or being everybody's best friend. But laughing in his berth at Tidmouth Sheds was worst of all. He huffed. And he chuffed quickly away. Thomas wished Stanley had never come to Sodor. The next day, Thomas was extra busy. He wanted everyone to see that he was better than Stanley. Thomas collected Jack. He tooted to Jack. Thomas smiled. He liked being in charge. Thomas wanted to show everyone that he could do everything. Next, he was pulling some heavy cars. Then there was trouble. 
Thomas was puffing too fast around the bend. He toppled off the track. His load crashed down the bank, cried Thomas. Luckily, no one was hurt. Sir Topham Hatt arrived with Edward and Rocky. He was cross. Thomas didn't want to go to the repair yard. He wanted to stay in charge. Added Sir Topham Hatt. This was the worst news ever for Thomas. He was so upset. Rocky lowered Thomas onto Edward's flatbed. Slowly, Edward puffed away from Great Waterton. Edward had to stop at a signal. Stanley chuffed cheerfully towards them. He whistled, and he puffed away. In the distance, they could hear the other engines cheer. Welcome, Stanley! Thomas was cross. He tooted. Edward's signal changed to go, and he puffed on. Soon Thomas was as good as new. He tooted. Thomas couldn't wait. He chuffed cheerfully out of the repair yard. Thomas was very happy to see his friend Percy. He tooted. Peeped Percy proudly. Thomas didn't want to hear him about Stanley. He was upset. Next, Thomas found Jack, Monty, and Max. They were really busy. Jack cried. To the Thomas? But Jack, Monty, and Max were too busy to notice him. Thomas was even more upset. He felt as if he didn't matter anymore. He puffed sadly away. When Thomas forgot about feeling sad, he chuffed into Great Waterton Station. It was starting to look as if it did a long time ago. He cried. Then Thomas saw Stanley. He was with Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt saw Thomas. He boomed. We Stanley, Thomas to the back, but really quietly. Sir Topham had declared. He added. Thomas's funnel flattened. Stanley was to stay in charge. Thomas had lost the most important job of, of all, the job he wanted more than anything else. That afternoon, Stanley asked Thomas to shunt some cars. Stanley chuffed cheerfully. Thomas was really good at shunting cars, and he also really liked shunting cars, but he didn't like Stanley telling him what to do. Thomas chuffed unhappily to the cars. He wanted, to, he wanted things back to where they were before Stanley had arrived on the island. Thomas shunted lots of cars. Stanley had to take them up the steep hill out of the town to the wharf. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. He puffed to himself. Soon the cars were ready. They were very, very heavy. Stanley chuffed back. He puffed. To to Thomas. But Thomas knew it was too long and too heavy. Stanley started up the hill. It was very steep. Stanley was doing his best. Stanley was using all his huff and all his puff. The cars clanked and creaked. The train was far too heavy. Stanley's wheels sp spun and slid. Suddenly, the coupling snapped, and Stanley's cars rolled away. Faster and faster, the engines gasped as Stanley's train came racing down the hill. It smashed into the tower!
as the tower smashed to the ground. Bricks and dust exploded everywhere. All their hard work was wasted. The engines gasped in horror, and Thomas felt worst of all. He knew it was his fault. Sir Topham Hart and Miss Jenny came to see what had happened. Boom, Sir Topham Hart. He asked. Thomas felt terrible. He knew why he had done it. But he couldn't tell Sir Topham Hart and the other engines. He felt too, too ashamed. So he said nothing. Sir Topham Hart was very cross. The other engines started to whisper. Snorted James. Asked Toby. Peep Percy, but he was worried. Thomas felt very bad. He puffed slowly away. Thomas found an old track. He wanted to be alone. He puffed sadly. Stanley chuffed towards Thomas. He saw that Thomas looked sad and alone. He chuffed to himself. He felt very sorry for him. Later, Sir Topham Hatt called the engines together. He announced sternly. The engines gasped. He added. Thomas had let down Sir Topham Hatt. He had let down the other engines. And he let himself down. The other engines started to chuff away. No one spoke to Thomas. He was no longer in charge. And he felt he was no longer wanted. That night, all the other engines were asleep at the sheds. But not Thomas. Jack and Alfie had already loaded the cars of rubble. Thomas wanted to do something to get his old job back. So Thomas started to shunt the cars away. Thomas worked very hard. He felt very pleased for himself. Then Thomas saw one last car. It had rolled in front of an old mine shaft. Thomas smiled. Then there was trouble. Thomas biffed the car too hard. It rolled forward and disappeared into the mine, exclaimed Thomas. Thomas rolled forward and peered inside. It was very dark. He chuffed. Thomas puffed into the mine. It was very dark. Thomas was happy he had a bright lamp. He saw the car rolling away and disappear around a bend, puffed Thomas. The slope was very steep. Thomas whizzed on it and clattered around the bend. Up Thomas wished and down he whizzed. Thomas whistled. He cried. It was very scary, but it was very exciting. Thomas had almost caught up to the car. He whistled happily. But Thomas didn't see the junction ahead. The car whizzed down the right track and Thomas sped down the left. Thomas had lost the runaway car, but his roller coaster ride was so much fun. Thomas soon forgot about the car. Then there was trouble. The tunnel ahead was blocked, cried Thomas. He applied his brakes. But it was too late. Thomas crashed straight through the block tunnel. With a mighty splash, Thomas landed in a pool of water. He gasped. It didn't feel fun anymore. It felt scary. He wished quietly. Thomas drifted slowly ahead. There was nothing he could do. Thomas gasped as he floated along the tunnel. 
he tooted as loudly as he could. He cried, but there was no one there to hear his whistle. Thomas wailed. The next morning, Stanley, James, Gordon, Percy, Edward, Henry, Emily and Toby had arrived for work. Stanley asked the engines. Looked. Thomas wasn't there. They all thought hard. No one knew where Thomas was. James was worried. He asked the little engines at the junction. James puffed. None of the little engines had seen Thomas either. Percy called Jack and his team together. Percy peeped. Jack and his team thought hard. But none of them had seen Thomas. Thomas drifted along the tunnel. He realized he was moving faster. He cried as he raced along the tunnel. Sir Topham Hatt was called. Edward puffed. Whistled Emily. Peep Percy. Boom Sir Topham Hatt. Everyone agreed and they had to find Thomas at once. He boomed importantly. Deep inside the mine, Thomas went up and down, round and about, and the water around, rode around him. Sir Topham Hatt drove to every lookout point. Up in the hills, the narrow-gauge engines puffed and peered, but no one could find Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt stood by the crumbled tower. Everyone was tired. Everyone had tried their hardest. But there was no sign of Thomas. Peep Percy. All the engines agreed. Boom Sir Topham Hatt. Stanley also knew how important Thomas was. He chuffed away thoughtfully. Stanley arrived at the sidings. A train of cars was waiting for him. But Stanley wasn't thinking about the cars. He was thinking about Thomas. Stanley thought back to the day when Thomas saw him pulling Annie and Clarabelle. And he remembered the evening at Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas was upset because Stanley was in his berth. Then Stanley remembered Thomas's face after the accident. Stanley puffed slowly. And Stanley whooshed away to the hills. In the dark tunnel, Thomas was very scared. He was washed and waved forward. His fire had gone out and his boiler was cold. Stanley was up high in the hills. He whistled, but only his echo came back. The river was rushed and Thomas whooshed with it into the darkness. Suddenly, he crashed through into a thick wall of bushes. He flew across the ravine and hit the ground with a bump. Thomas slid down the hill. Trees and rocks were everywhere. Thomas cried. At last, Thomas stopped at the bottom of the hill. He was stuck. Thomas saw that he had landed next to a track. He cried. Thomas could do nothing but wait and hope. Stanley had looked everywhere. He couldn't find Thomas. Soon he would have to go to work at Great Waterton. Thomas was thinking about Great Waterton. He thought about the tower. He thought about the tower. And the moment Stanley's cars had smashed into it and the tower tumbled down. He puffed sadly. Thomas wished he was back with his friends. Stanley had to get back to Great Waterton. <laughs>
Stanley wished, and he whistled loud and long. This time Thomas heard the whistle. He gasped. With his very last puff and his very last huff, Thomas blew his whistle as loud as he could. Stanley heard Thomas. Quickly, he reversed back to the branch line. He whistled happily. Thomas had run out of puff. He couldn't whistle again. He could only wait. Then Thomas saw Stanley chuffing around the bend. He cried. Whistled Stanley. Tooted Thomas sadly. Then Thomas told Stanley all about his adventures in the mine. Stanley was amazed. Tooted Thomas. Stanley smiled. He wished. Soon Stanley was coupled up to Thomas. Then Stanley huffed and puffed. Thomas was very heavy. There was a lot of water in his firebox. Stanley didn't give up. He wished, and with a mighty heave, Stanley pulled his friend back to, back to the track. To did Thomas. Then there was a very loud crack. The valve in Stanley's boiler had burst. Stanley was a very strong engine. But pulling Thomas had been too much. Now he couldn't move. Stanley felt very sad. Whistled Thomas. Stanley smiled. Thomas was his new friend. There was nothing Thomas couldn't do for Stanley. The fireman put Stanley's dry coal into Thomas's firebox. In no time at all, Thomas's boiler was bubbling and his steam was wishing. Thomas puffed bubbly. Stanley smiled back, and puff by puff, Thomas shunted Stanley along the track. It was very hard work. Thomas had to puff up hills and puff through bushes. But Thomas didn't mind. He was glad to push his new friend Stanley home. At last, Thomas and Stanley puffed into Great Waterton. Thomas was tired, but he had never felt happier. Henry, Rocky, Edward, and Emily were busy working. They tooted and whistled when they saw Thomas and Stanley, and soon the sound of every engine's whistle were echoing around Great Waterton. The news spread throughout Sodor. The small engines cried. Mr. Percival beamed with pride. Terence told 